Outrageous. Switch London, you just failed us miserably, and now we're relying on the French. Outrageous. Right, let's do that again, shall we? <laughs> beans. 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 <laughs> Hold on, boss. Again. And a bro, Fist T-Wall, etc., etc. It's our second time running through the intro because Twitch London just crashed as I started the show. Unlucky. It is the way it goes. But... Everything's wonderful. I hope you're having a great time. We are back from the race to world first. In the first intro, I showed this thing. There it is. It's a display with everyone's name on it. I made a joke about the fact they came second. Everybody knows that by now. Etc. 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 So what a great intro. Welcome to Drama Time. I hope you're feeling good. And welcome new friends on their first visits to the live show. And now you understand the mishaps and the joy and the degeneracy that you don't get to experience at home. Right? There's all kinds of things that happen at the live show that those people on YouTube and those people on Spotify and Google Music and Apple Music and all that kind of shit don't know about. But now you do. Now you're here for the reality of what goes on. Like the bean song or the... Did you like A Rat in My Kitchen? What a glorious tale that was of A Rat in My Kitchen. But, yes, I was saying, as I was so rudely interrupted by Twitch London, we're kind of screwed. Uh, we have, according to our calculations, of which we put into a calculator and then we added it to a calendar and then we got some sort of from the Matrix to figure out, uh, we have no time left uh, before Final Fantasy 16 launches in June. Oof, oofers, oofers. Yoshi P's nightmare fueled uh, rapture is coming. So, according to my sheet that was drawn up, I did promise you a schedule because at the moment, According to what's going on, uh, we have four raids in Destiny 2 left, two raid wings in Guild Wars 2, including the Ice Brood Saga and the End of Dragons. We have Final Fantasy Savage Criterion Dungeon, Blue Mage, another Criterion Dungeon, the World of Warcraft raid to do. We have to finish Crisis Core and the FF7 remake, and Warframe is sending us early access to one of their really cool new games, we'll talk about it later, uh, to do in the next four weeks. right uh so <laughs> uh <laughs> that's up until the launch of ff16 that is not including elden ring tears of the kingdom baldur's gate 3 resident evil 4 the last of us and by popular demand xcom 1 uh which i believe uh, as i found out today is going to be voiced by members of the community So, <laughs> gonna be a busy old time. So, <laughs> it's gonna be a busy old time. I'm determined to meet this goal. We are going to make it happen. We have a set deadline of June 22nd, which is when FF16 launches. We are going to plow on. It's going to be a fun, fun, and fun-filled extravaganza. Yeah, it's not copium. It's not fucking copium, all right? I'm going to get it done. Uh, so all that is coming in the next little while here, as well as, of course, as a proper focus on YouTube, which has been a nightmare recently. We apologize, our YouTube audience, for your lack of gaming videos. I had time set aside, and then our PC died, and we're on a new PC. Hello, oh, new PC, uh, which I fixed last night uh, to get working again. So we should be golden on that. Uh, I'm just going to be a busy boy. That's all it is. I also have a wedding anniversary coming. Uh, as well as BlizzCon. I will be in Australia. I will be in New Zealand. I'm going to probably be at BlizzCon. And we have FanFest. <sighs> it's a busy, busy time, isn't it? The busy, busy time. It's going to be good. We have so much to do, but that's not why you're here right now. I'll have more details for you during our regular streams, and I'll do an update video on YouTube as to what is happening. Because it's Friday afternoon, which means it's time to check in with the reality in the real world that lives in the online world of the madness and the weirdness that we encounter on the day-to-day -day basis. When people get to hide behind their precious little keyboards and be the monsters they were born to be. Oh, please don't hit me, you fucking cunt. Please don't hit me. Uh, and that is what we're all about on Drama Time, is retelling and regaling each other with these stories and mysteries that incurred uh, in our online lifestyles. And it's so fun. 
It's super fun. Everything from the weird and wacky. And if you want to send your story into us, you can at drama at preachgaming.com. Just send it in, you know? When he's sat there on the toilet, on the pisser, on whatever it's going to be, then you can do that and send it to us. Uh, and we shall hopefully check through and see if it's really fun. Or at least Bex will. And she sent me some things today because she thinks they're going to annoy me. Because we've had some really, really sad stories <laughs> recently, but worth reading. But before that, I have told many of you uh, several years ago, this is not a recent thought, like four or five years ago, I was considering dropping drama time. I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and if not thousands of stories that you guys have sent into me over the years that we've been doing this show. Uh, and I was looking to change it up and stuff. But it was after meeting people and unveiling how they treat drama time that I decided not to do that. And in fact, off the back of that, we received this message that Bex has told me if I don't share it with the community, I'm basically the devil. Uh, so I do want to do want to regale this. Uh, hi, Bex. I've been meaning to write this to you for a while, but I'm just now getting around to it. I don't know if you pick them or if it's RNG, but regardless, I want to thank you for putting my name in a drama time a few weeks back. I've watched live or on YouTube for a very long time, and it was really cool actually being in one of the stories. Also, and feel free to pass this along to the rest of the team. I wanted to thank you guys for doing what you do. I work overnight for a child, elder, disabled abuse hotline. And when the stream comes up, it is the highlight of my night listening to these people. I use YouTube while lurking in Twitch to dissociate a little from the endless stream of horrible things we have come through and make it more tolerable. Fortunately, I've worked myself as a unit primarily dealing with internet reports, so I'm able to keep the stream up in the background for most of my night. It may seem silly, but it really does mean a lot to have you guys around and drama time puts a smile on my face. Thanks again, and I hope to meet everyone at PreachCon some year. That's why we continue to do it. That's incredible. That is heartwarming. That is incredible. And as I've said, shared stories of uh, people putting drama time onto USBs and sending them out to the front lines of war zones. That is a true thing that happens. <laughs> so that their soldier partners can watch some drama time in the fucking dust and the desert and all that kind of thing. Uh, and it's super cool to know that's where it goes out. Because for me, of course, it's just a camera lens. That's you there. That's you. There you are. And then there's this. But this could all be chat GPT for all I know. If I, I mean, it's, it's just like, it does it read me? If I say this person is guilty, there seems to be like an automated response that occurs. And I'm not sure whether it's just AI at this point or whatever the fuck it's going to be. Beep boops. <laughs> it's all these beep boops and uh, hi, Mike. <laughs> guilty, guilty. How rude. Guilty, guilty, guilty. And a wave of hammers to go along with it. So, big thank you for sending those messages in. It's always nice to know a little something about the people behind the messages that appear calling me the rap failure or whatever they want to call me. Uh, so, let's get into some stories uh, to have some fun on this fine Friday. Yeah. Before I plan my weekend with my oldest son, who's apparently becoming a man. And he needs a man's weekend. Okay. <laughs> I'm a man. I like playing video games. Should we do that? It's real manly. That's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> yeah, just like shaving together and talk about women and have a pint and a pie. I, I have no idea. Uh, vibe check. Vibe check. The vibe check is very important. What? I believe this is something to do with the guild. Oh, we need. Oh, it's an FF FF story. Oh my god. Uh, my oldest son is now nine years old. Yes, how old do you guys feel who were there that when he was born? He has grown along with you guys. He's now nine years old and he's uh, becoming a man. <laughs> he's becoming a man. Those of you who were there for that first stream when I brought my son on. <laughs> oh no, we're old. <laughs> we're old. Uh, okay, I need some creativ creativity from our wonderful live audience here. Uh, we need a guild name that has a goth feel to it so we're in final fantasy 14 to kick us off today uh we need a guild name that has a goth feel to it so we're looking for an ff guild name the goth wombles the burger ravens tears oh my god uh the bleeding hearts the black beans <laughs> big titty rothgars darker than night oh i like that actually darker than night <sighs> Uh, we're darker than the night itself. God damn. Only, not even the stars light our souls. 
Let's get into it. Hey, preacher, long time listener. The story isn't mega, so I'll keep it short and skip some details about me. It's not important. But we are hailing from Eorzea. And the game that is featured in it, of course, is FF14. I joined an FC. They were called Darker Than Night. And I made a mistake because I had not been following you until you started playing FF and had not been pre-warned and pre-steeled, I like that phrase, from the tales of drama time. Essentially, my friend, I ignored all the warning signs. The red flags were right there and I missed every single one. I actually thought it was really cute that I joined an FC that was run by a boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, and that must mean stability. That's what that means. Of course it does. Yeah, if they're in a solid relationship, they can absolutely take great care of you. It will be fine. Oh, yeah. Uh, but despite that, though, it was going pretty well. We do like content together, but mainly everyone in Darker Than Night is just pals and likes to stick together as one cohesive family unit. Mm-hmm. Even when the game is dead, no content to do. We play other games together. Oh, there'll be none of that. Oh, no, no. I don't think. There'll be none of that. Not other games. No, 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 no. Not the outsiders. Absolutely not. No, no, no. No, no, no. Oh, you choose your game and you stay there. <clears throat> Even though we have different time zones, it's always a good time. Every now and then, we get a little bit saucy. After we have an internal free company vote. To open recruitment. <laughs> There's a vote. <laughs> There's a vote. Do we open recruitment? Do we open our doors to the outsiders? And we decide to put Darker Than Nights on the rec official recruitment board. See what turns up. Toting ourselves as a fully casual guild. And we have in our notes that we do nothing extravagant. Can you do this in an FF free company recruitment? Our notes are, we're a super casual guild, we don't do anything extravagant, but we don't want any squeakers. I don't know what that means. And our guild has an NSFW tab, so 18 only. What's a squeaker? Children? Oh, young people. Okay. And they have an NSFW tab. So it's 18 plus only. It's not rats, you fucking clowns. It's not rats. Jesus Christ. When someone takes the bait, we put them through what our free company has determined to be the vibe check. To see if they will fit in with our atmosphere, our goals, and our ways of playing. But in this case, someone fucked up. And we recruited two new people, Nanalil and Bex, I only just read this. Nanalil Bean Muncher and Agagor Bean Muncher. What did you just say? You had to give them surnames. Oh, very nice. Very nice, Bex. Very nice. Very nice. Thanks, Bex. They need of course we couldn't have done the story without knowing the surnames of the characters. That would have been impossible, right? <clears throat> For any of you not in the know, I suggest you watch the highlights video of the race to world first. Uh, Nanalil and Ag <coughs> Nanalil and Agagor Bean Muncher were friends IRL, and they just were looking for some people to play with. That's all. The Bean, <laughs> fuck you, Bex. You rewrote this. The Bean Munchers. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> You're a dick, Bex. You're an absolute fucking dick. The Bean Munchers knew that we didn't have a raid group in our FC, but we did do dailies together and the occasional mount farm. <clears throat> Nanalil talked a lot and Agagor was quiet. And you might say, it sounds like a balanced couple, right? That's nice. 
The problem was Nanalil talked a lot. He said many words that never needed to be said. Upon seeing a re- relatively feminine name of one of our longtime officers, His immediate question was, are you one of them SJW people? <laughs> What's your name, Rebecca? <laughs> SJW. Yeah, yeah, seen your type before. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that, seen that. Yeah, seen that before. And then started asking for his pronouns. <laughs> Welcome to the guild. So, I mean, you removed this person immediately, right? That's what happened. And it was the end of the drama story. And then they got kicked. And that was the end of the drama story. Of course not. Otherwise, this story would not be in front of me now. Uh, <clears throat> Agador, on the other hand, was very quiet. But when he did speak, he was very funny and like-minded. He spoke so little. I can't even really recall what he said. But I remember he didn't upset me. So I consider them to be pleasant. <laughs> Fair enough. After a while, and shockingly, Nanalil started making some of our members uncomfortable to be around. Obviously, it started wrong with the SJW comment, but then it became very apparent that Nanalil was doing something that our FC didn't like. It became clear to us Nanalil had a damage meter installed. It started small. With little backhanded comments about people's performance. He kept going on and on about people not only just dying to mechanics, but that people from the party finder being shitters with low DPS. And how he hoped that Squeenix would allow him to increase his blacklist with people he considered worthy of his time. Oh, I like this guy. And one comment that I remember clearly was that after 10 minutes of nobody typing in the FC chat, he just typed up, if I see anyone that I know is garbage, I tell the party how this person is a waste of life and that that player should be removed or he will leave. Shockingly, it seemed that he left most of the time. I think I've met this guy. Ah, Jesus Christ. So we decided that maybe he had come from World of Warcraft. (laughs) Holy shit. Oh, God. Not that this guy's an asshole, but maybe he's been playing World of Warcraft. That is fucking cold. Ah. So, in that spirit and the friendly nature of our FC, we decided to have a sit-down conversation with him. We explained that we don't behave like that here and certainly not in darker than night. We don't want a guy to act like that with our FC name attached. It's not that we're well known on the server, But we are known locally as the goth free company that sits on the bench all the time like the South Park smoker kids. We liked this reputation and we wanted to keep it pure. I tell you what, gamers are a fucking weird bunch, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? (laughs) Gamers, we want to keep our image of South Park Kids Pure, and you're ruining it. I didn't immediately kick him, which is what I probably should have done. I thought we could help him grow and mature and let him know how his attitude was socially wrong here in Eorzea, and maybe he could adapt, become a better person, and that one day he would thank me in the future. Plus, we knew if we kicked him, we would lose Agagor, and we liked Agagor. I have sent you the Discord screenshot of our one-to-one conversation. Hey, Nanalil. 
uh, respond immediately resp uh, responded. What's this? Twelve minutes later, with the two beady eyes, <laughs> and then wah, w h a. I gotta have a quick conversation with you about some of your mannerisms. A number of comments that you make and your attitude towards players in Player Finder and Roulette in Final Fantasy is leaving a bad impression on some of our members and could give our free company a bad reputation. I didn't want to just blindside you, so I wanted to talk to you about it and see if we can work something out to help us all. Seems fine. Seems fine. He never replied to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> instead. <laughs> instead. He DM'd another officer. Who got this reply out of the blue. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, we'll go with the name Arthur for this case. No, let's. let's uh, who's the kind of pussy that would send that email? Lame one. Perfect. <clears throat> so this is Nanalil. Lame one, dead ass adds me on Discord as a friend just to call me toxic when I have been here for like a week and I haven't even played for like five fucking days. I can find a new FC so I won't be your problem and give you guys some sort of bad rep. Sorry for any vibes that I caused, man. Fucking thumbs up. And that was it. He told us to go fuck ourselves and quit the FC, left the Discord, and took Agagor with him. <laughs> Peace! But, but, he forgot to unfriend me. So it was funny to see him running around with my friend uh, Color in his name. So I blew him a kiss, and he panicked and teleported away. Agagor is still on my friends list, though. I shoot him a message in the pink whenever I see him around. To let him know that it's uh, that not only is he always welcome back, but his character also looks pretty. But let this be a reminder to you World of Warcraft refugees out there. This isn't Azeroth. And many free companies will not stand for what you people consider normal behavior. That's all for today. I hope you have a wonderful day. And remember to do your FF vibe check. You people. Wow. You people. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. You people. Did you hear that, you degenerate wow players? Well, if you want to play with shitters, then you should play with sh you shouldn't play with shitters. I don't know about that. <clears throat> uh oh. Hmm. Okay. Uh, a cult. Okay, I mean, if it's about a cult. <clears throat> Alright, let's do a cult. Yeah, let's do a cult. We're anti-cult around here. We don't like cults. The cult's progress. Jesus Christ, is this somebody abusing somebody? If you are, like, actively actively trying to create a cult environment, then hopefully somebody here is aware of who you are. That's all I'm saying. Maybe it's a nice cult. Who knows? Uh, I don't know what game we're in yet. We're in World of Warcraft, if you want to change the game. Uh, oh, we need a guild name, then. We need a guild name that sounds like the kind of name a cult trying to look like not a cult would use. So we're looking for a guild name... Of a cultish guild trying to not look like a guild. <laughs> the walkers. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> that sounds perfect. That sounds perfect. Uh, oh, how do you get your name in? Uh, it is our website supporters who fund this show and this time. Uh, who are a part of this. All right, we're going with the walkers. <clears throat> yeah, not a cult is too obvious, I'm afraid. All right. Hey, Mikey! And due to the recent, as of writing this trend of not greeting the audience because they're, they suck. Hello to your chat. Kind of a bad start. All right. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I, I feel like we may have judged this person in the past. 
But there's a reason that I wield this hammer. You understand that, right? There's a reason I wield this hammer. And our judgments are always fair and true and objective. So you, re you remember that before I have to pass judgment. You might remember me. Here we go. <laughs> you might remember your previous tale I titled The Bad Guild. In which we, the Anti-Political Correctness Guild. Oh, was this the guild that was full of like racists and stuff? Is that the guild? Is that the one? Am I remembering it right? It was all good memes. The German guild? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. In which we, the anti-political correctness guild, faced multiple issues. No, really? And the long road that was classic World of Warcraft. This actually fits in really well with our previous story. <laughs> Did you do this to me intentionally, Bex? This actually fits in really, really well with our previous story. <laughs> you people. I have been corrected by my then German leader. It didn't take months to kill Saffron. It took six weeks and then another two weeks to kill Kelpazad. Oh, okay. Back in the day. With our little uh, uh, law correction out the way on the canon of my guild, let's begin the tale of where that guild is now. Oh, no. Oh, where I am now. Okay. Something that I didn't mention was that, indeed, written at the very end, is that after uh, after not playing retail World of Warcraft as well as Draenor, I came back for Dragonflight. With the goal of starting my own non-pyramid scheme cult. That was your goal? With my RL friend, Devis. <clears throat> You people. You people. Devis is the hunter who used Orb of Deception during Prague on Four Horsemen. He is, I decided to make him my co-leader. <laughs> okay. Our little non-pyramid scheme cult named the Walkers was successfully created on 6th of July 2022 with the goal of achieving ahead of the curve. I wasn't used to retail WoW. Not having played it for more than six years. I was not in the know, how, know of how much people typically paid people to sign their guild charter. How much? What's the typical price? I asked the stream to sign ours when we tried to make the cross realm guild. How much are you paying people to sign? A hundred G? Bullshit. I was thinking 10. I've seen people pay 10 back in the day. A hundred is ridiculous. In classic, five to ten. I was asked for eleven on classic. <laughs> I do it for free as well. Like, whatever. Although, in my own little drama, Alex, fat boss Alex, I had to leave Bald, Fat and Ugly yesterday to try and make a cohesive guild for our World of Warcraft raids. But it doesn't work because you have to be on connected realms and all sorts of dog shit. So I tried to get reinvited to Bald, Fat and Ugly and I've been denied by the current guild master, Kenny, supposedly my friend, because I didn't have time to have dinner with him in Denmark on my way back from Sweden. <clears throat> he even screenshotted my guildless character in Discord and sent it to me. So I'm now guildless and fucking poor. <laughs> I'm guildless and poor in World of Warcraft on my warrior. Thanks, Kenny. Appreciate it. He held me to ransom last night, saying, after this M+, plus, after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You people. Wouldn't happen in, in FF. It'd be all friend and welcoming. <sighs> Needless to say, I did not have anywhere near enough money to get the guild. I was, in your words, Mike, poor. <laughs> Actually, I believed it as advanced to peasant, uh, which I believe is less than poor. We're now peasants. So, yeah, it, it seems to have upgraded over recent weeks to peasant. Uh, <clears throat> Me and Devis, though, still need to get the walkers started, though. We needed the non-pyramid scheme cult up and running. So I had to get really creative to get some signatures. I typed this message into trade chat. Sign my charter for the walkers and join us for the next big thing! Exclamation mark. 
I'm gonna be honest, I really didn't think it would work, but it did. A small handful of players were piqued by this interest. I assume they're the same people who click on the Facebook ads with you won't believe the seventh thing. And they just signed the whole thing for free. <laughs> there are, there's a reason those taglines work. <laughs> there's a reason. You won't believe number seven. My guild's going to do the next big thing. It's going to be awesome. Unfortunately, though, not a single one of the people who signed the guild charter stuck around at all. And our happy little cult lost its only members within a few weeks. I was feeling a little hopeless, to be honest. But Devis was determined. I was... Uh, <laughs> he's been around in retail. He's played and raided at the start of Shadowlands. So he's been through some shit. So he knew a lot more about recruitment than I did. We decided to expand our horizons. And began to look for more interesting places to advertise our cult. One of the members who joined early, Wazin even joined us and became our third officer which is why he joined in the first place you could just make everybody officer i guess i guess that's good just make everybody who joins an officer he was apparently an old guildie of devis back at the start of shadowlands and he had spotted our recruitment posts he wanted to play with his buddy again and so he and a friend of his joined our ranks eventually we gathered enough people who wanted to actually play that we could make our own dungeon group. Yes, Preach, it took seven weeks, but we had a total of five players online at the same time. Wow. This is just a fucking rocket of a starter. This is huge. This is huge. We even managed a week later to do a full guild group Mythic Plus. I was so happy that night that I actually logged off and went and had a beer to celebrate. It was proof that my dreams of success in World of Warcraft were becoming a reality. For me, doing a full guild M Plus meant that the walkers really could take off and survive all the way to the Dragonflight launch. Wow. And I wasn't wrong, you know. Every week, another person or so would join. More players. Some found other homes along the way, but we managed to get the people we needed to have 10 people online when Dragonflight released. We had found quite an interesting member at this point who joined us either at launch or right after. His name was Teus, and he described himself during his application to the guild as a pumper when we asked for his class. Upon checking, he was a retribution pilot. That's kind of a chad move. What class do you play? Pumper. Yeah, that's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. A fucking blaster. That's all you need to know. I'm a fucking blaster. Oh, rep paladin? Okay. He was on a different server looking to migrate, but wanted to join our raids before committing the cash money. Hard no from me. He was clearly poor IRL. I, <laughs> I was very clear in telling him only on our server, in our guild, could you be allowed to join our raids. Unfortunately, despite me having the guild master tag, someone else invited him to the raid regardless of him not migrating. <laughs> I'll just whisper someone else. <laughs> it's a pumper move. I'll just whisper someone else. It's fine. No problem. Oh, thanks for the invite. <laughs> While the walkers practice free speech... After what had happened in the past, I no longer condoned toxic behavior. It turns out that Pumpateus was kind of an elitist jerk. He wanted to do some guild EM+, but when people were trying to join him, he was armoring their characters. I was very vocal about not being even remotely possible. 
to do keys with people who hadn't done 15 plus or had an appropriate score. <sighs> I want to be clear, this was week one or two of M plus even being available. This is a very appropriate story considering our previous one. Holy fucking Jesus. What an absolute dick. Of course, people started vo voicing their complaints to Teus. The regular messages. How can I do 15s if we can't be invited to the plus 15? I still, though, wanted to give him a chance. I'd see if we could correct the situation. Will you just kick these people? When you see a fucking... If you see a bomb on the floor and a fuse with a fucking fire going down it like this, just put your foot on it. Just put your foot on it. And just stop it there. Done. Fixed. End of story. All sorted. You see, Mike, one of the goals I had when I built the walkers was that we were going to be a social people. A non-pyramid scheme cult who only unifying link was to get ahead of the curve. Nothing to do with M+, or PvP, or anything outside of that goal. I then remembered all the wisdom that I have been taught by drama time. Do not fucking, do not fucking dare put whatever dumb decision you're about to make on me or any one of these people here. Don't you fucking dare lay that on our doorstep. Because you sh if you had followed the wisdom of this show, you would have already kicked this person. You are incorrect, sir. Incorrect, sir. They would already be fucking gone. <sighs> okay, I was a bit premature with that rage. <laughs> I then remember... Uh, sorry, I apologize. Uh, I just read the next sentence. I then remembered all of the wisdom that I had been taught from your show, Drama Time, and didn't want to risk getting one guide. Yeah, okay, that is the wisdom of the show. <laughs> okay, I take it back. Uh, but I'll, to be fair, that's PTSD from the amount of people who have blamed me for their problems without having read Drama Time. Okay, <clears throat> so I did what any responsible leader would do in this situation after having tried to solve it for a week. I messaged him earlier that day let him know that we didn't. he didn't fit into our environment and that he needs to find a new home. Teus was then immediately removed from the Discord server, but not the guild because he still had not transferred and therefore was not in the, uh, in the cult in-game. The walkers happily trotted on towards a brighter future in raiding, doing what we can to down these bosses with the people who happen to be online. Raz Normal fell. We celebrated our voice and took the mandatory screenshot, which is now immortalized on the Discord server. Heroic started. Things are going are now getting fucking real. We're entering what I considered to be big boy territory. And I started to get nervous. The reality of my situation was dawning on me. Because one thing that was in the back of my mind and hadn't been a problem to now is that Teus was right. The walkers was full of shitters. I used to voice my concerns as the officer channel under the phrase, not the best performing players. But the reality was, we were knee deep in shitters. Devis had been raid leading up until this point, doing his best while also trying to do DPS. This took us all the way to heroic broodkeeper. This was the wall. People were not understanding. They couldn't understand how the fire swirlies worked, how damage was being dealt. So, we decided to consult a big dick player. We searched through our list to find somebody who was a member of a mythic guild. He was a good friend of Wazin and an even better player. He, I, Devis and Wazin decided to have a meeting in voice chat. Going over, how do we get these people, these people, over a boss that was actually difficult? What is the best strategy to avoid people dying to this boss? 
He watched our videos. He saw what we were doing. And a slightly adjusted strategy was being formed. We put it all into practice the next reset. And that night, Broodkeeper fell. I was literally feeling like I had actually had sex. Brackets, I'm still a virgin. Why are you telling me that? <laughs> you must be fucking trolling. You must be trolling. Why have you written that in? Thanks, I guess. <laughs> We've now literally got one boss left. Until we reach the end goal of our happy little journey. Turns out though, Heroic Razageth was quite the step up. Combine the lightning bitch with the fact that we're not the best players. <clears throat> we were progressing, for sure. It was slow, it was painful, but we were moving forward. But then, something magical happened. I don't know how. I don't know why. But Blizzard sought to nerf Razageth hardcore. This now meant that we were deprogressing the fight. At this point, we had a total of 123 pulls on Heroic Razageth. Motherfucker. 123 tries? So That's more than the current race to world first. <laughs> For context, that's more than the current race to world first. <laughs> to put that into perspective of where we are, that is where we're at. <sighs> So, so many of these pulls were wait phase one wipes over and over again after having gotten to phase three. Our raiders were becoming bored. It seemed unkillable. Less and less people showed up and eventually I had to make that announcement. The next reset is going to be the last walkers raid for the whole tier. As I typed it and pushed the enter key, I felt a, such a sadness in my heart that the dreams that I had come up with, that this journey that I had started, my first real try at doing something in WoW for six years was going to finish with one boss remaining unkilled. But then, apparently, people really don't like missing out on the end boss. And people just pulled their fucking pants up. We pulled the next raid here and we slapped Razageth all the way down to less than 2%. You wiped in phase 3? And just like that, out of fucking nowhere. Sadly though, this was all the time we had for that night. How the fuck did you wipe in phase 3 of Razageth at 2%? How is that even possible? How? How is that even possible? And then come the very final raid day for what we dubbed Season 1 of the Guild. We grouped up once more. Twelve people in total bothered to show up. Twelve heroes. First pull of the day. We wipe on Phase 1. The second pull. We wipe on Phase 1. The third pull. We wipe the phase one. Morale was low. This was our last chance. We say we'll give her one more go to see if we can get out of phase one. We have proven that we can reach phase three. We can do it. We pull again. And Razageth just dies. I don't even know how to explain it. It was so anticlimactic. But it was like the easiest boss we'd ever seen in our life. Nobody died. And she fell over quicker than it had taken us to even get to phase 3 in previous trolls. I felt deflated but at the same time, it was glorious. The walkers had succeeded in achieving the ultimate goal we set out for this guild. In game, after a brief pause as to how easy it was, people started cheering. People started actually cheering. I had instructed everyone to beforehand to go and do some RP in Valdraken after the raid had finished. 
whether we killed her or not to say goodbye to the tear. And so we did. We gathered around. We took out drinks and our food while instanced in this little area. And then proceeded to give out some awards that I thought was something missing from guilds to different members for various reasons. Some of them were really stupid. And I hadn't told my officers. So when I gained Devis, I gave Devis the best raid leader award for season one. He was really surprised. Isn't he just the raid leader? How is there a best raid leader award? <laughs> but the only raid leader. <laughs> this was a top secret cult leader material that I thought our guilds could do to separate them from other guilds. I gave out about 70,000 gold. Split among seven people for some proper and some meme reasons. Wazid was always a rich bastard, so he got five gold because I couldn't give him anything he didn't already have. At least they got some gold. That's kind of cool. Devis also got given a round of in-game applause because without him, this entire cult would have never existed. I would never have started this at all without him by my side. Even if I had, even if I had for some reason, I wouldn't have been able to get him through any of those raids. And then also instructed everyone to take a bow to the raid leader to show him the respect he had earned. It felt like a scene from Lord of the Rings where everyone bowed to Frodo and the gang. And yes, Mike, I also bowed to him because just like L'Oreal claims, he's worth it. <laughs> Thank you, Bex, for going through my tale. Thank you, Mike, for reading it. <clears throat> Happy evening to all the live listeners and take care. I hope to see you in Azeroth. Note from Bex. The author let me know that the walkers is disbanding. Rip, should have eaten more beans. <laughs> they disbanded after this. You RP'd, you took bows, you had an awards ceremony, and then you disbanded. <sighs> Fair, enough. Fair enough. Why not? Yeah, it's the end of the cult. Yeah, apparently it's called. It didn't feel cult like. I like the idea that people always try and make something new to go with their, their new fantastical idea. I would like to see. At the next race to world first, an awards ceremony at the end. We could play like the uh, Star Wars music. Da, 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 da. The whole business. All right. What do we got here? We have. Uh, we need another guild name for our live audience that is definitely not scammers. We need a non sussy guild name. <clears throat> We the people. Oh no, the bean dealers, the beaners. Uh, why? All right, leave the beans alone. <laughs> Definitely not scamming. AT and T, the pyramid. Oh, I kind of like that. That also passes for some sort of tech company that's definitely not out to steal your information for sure. You're not having the beans. Leave the beans alone. All right, let's go for our final tale of tonight. I don't know what game we're in yet. Hello, preacher in the audience. I have a little short, sweet story for you today about scamming and stupidity and the ego of people who do this shit. Now, bear in mind, this is a retelling of a raid filled with the worst audio quality and balance I have ever heard. With an obscene amount of talking over one in... Oh, it's bald, fat, and ugly. With an obscene amount of talking over one another, a note-taking was done three months ago. Prepare for a bit of scuff, but no. Everything I'm about to tell you is accurate. And I'll explain why later. I got a name wrong. Uh, oh, Haku. You know why that is? I read Hark. And I thought of Haku the wrestler. I don't know why. I don't know why. It just popped into my head. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen. We go back in time. To October 22. We are in the easiest version of WoW I've ever seen. Ooh. Wrath of the Lich King Classic. I don't know during the classic version. Is anyone even like failing three drakes and shit anymore? Probably not, right? I mean, Wrath of the Lich King was notoriously easy when it launched. So I imagine it's even worse now. Uh, I am... Are you, uh, those of you who are playing Wrath Classic, you haven't got ICC yet, right? You could fail three... Original three drakes was the hardest content in the game, yeah. Still in Ulduar? 
And you've got Trial of the Grand Crusader coming. Baller. Absolutely baller. Great raid. People hate it, but I think it's great. Uh, okay. <clears throat> We're in Wrath of the Lich King Classic. I'm sitting in Dalaran when I notice a group from the guild, the Pyramid, advertising for a quick, full clear of Nax Ramus, 10-man, <sighs> probably undying run. Pugging... Are people going to do the undying just pugging people out of Dalaran? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> they had usual master looter. Main spec over off spec. Only the Saffron quest item is reserved. What did that do? Fuck, I can't remember. What did the Saffron quest item do? No, no, I'm not being an ego boy. We killed... We killed that shit week one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The necklace for Malagos. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> Was it only one per person? No, we had the whole guild in there really fast. It wasn't one per person, surely. Is that how it worked? Any knowers? One per week per person. Was it? Huh. Okay. Now, I mostly play retail myself and only really play Classic WoW to relive some good old nostalgia and to get footage for relevant videos. I'm a content creator myself. So knowing I had no Nax 10 footage of Classic at this point, only 25 man up to the four horsemen, I decided, fuck it, I'll join in. Listen to some podcasts, do a really, really, really easy raid. Oh no. <laughs> Upon joining the guild, the Pyramids group, it was then that I not only noticed that only two pugs were me and a random priest named Sartoru, I also noticed the raid leader's name Hark, with one of the very obvious TV at the end of it. And with no Discord invites sent out or anything, I decided, hey, I wonder if this guy is streaming this raid and he has a lot of viewers. So I go to Twitch, I type in Hark TV. And I find a Twitch channel. Upon going to this Twitch channel, I did in fact see he was streaming to his friends. And I could hear the guild discord. Oh no. Oh no. It was then I decided I would hang around just to listen for calls. However, I said nothing in chat in game or in Twitch. Not wanting to seem weird. Which you may or may not agree to. Uh, I do. Generally. I mean, I make most of my raids via stream these days. I don't really pug. But back in the day. I'll tell you why. Because I imagine this is what's about to happen. My guild in Cataclysm. Which had been around since vanilla World of Warcraft. It was one of the oldest and most famous guilds in uh, Horde side of WoW for many years. Uh, Zoe was a part of that guild. Where I first met uh, a wonderful Zogi bear. Um, nearly died because of a streamer. Because when streaming became popular, everybody was doing it. We were progressing. No, we weren't progressing. We were on a farm, an alt kill of the boss in Firelands that drops the staff for the druids. That turns them into cats. Flame something, something, something guy. Uh, second to last boss. Um, and one of the guys... Uh, yeah, Major Domo Staghelm, that guy. Yeah, F F Fandral, that's the guy. Uh, but <clears throat> either way, uh, one of our warlock, one of our best warlocks in the guild, had decided to try out a mage. At the same time, one of our best mages in the guild was playing some alt in there, and he was the one that was streaming. Little did he know that our best warlock, who was currently playing his alt mage, and I agree, not like immensely well, but fine. Uh, he was just whispering this other guy in the raid constantly about how shit he was. Non-stop. Uh, until eventually, the, the warlock just said, you know we can all see the fucking stream, right? And then instead of like backing down and saying sorry, this guy just went, well, you are playing it fucking shit. 
I, I don't know why you're pressing any of those fucking buttons. That's not... And then just, like, double down on the shit. And it turned into this whole war on, like, one of the easiest bosses in the fucking raid. And it just exploded. And these were, like, two of our top casters. And the guy he was whispering was one of our tanks. So now we had, like, two of our top DTSs and the tank who were all involved in this fucking bullshit. And it just blew up. And the whole raid was called off. Everything. It had to... It took, like, three days to settle that shit down. It was so fucking lame. And it was just an alt raid. Who cared? Who fuck? It was like an alt normal raid. The boss was getting melted. Anyway. <clears throat> so yes, if I'm in a pug and I'm streaming it, I do let people know. Uh, because of that. Not wanting to seem weird, which you may or may not agree to. But overall, I'm glad I didn't tell them. Now, my recording was being done boss to boss. B-roll footage, so no need to gather audio. Yeah, I'm fully, uh, fully aware. Drastically reduced file size. Does it? Chris, is that true? I don't even know. <laughs> I never mute the audio. I record it anyway. Thought nothing of it was just... I don't think it... I don't... I highly doubt aud cutting audio actually like, reduces it. I think it just records a blank track. Yeah. Uh, either way. Uh, was just here to get footage of all the bosses and some trash here and there. That was up until Maxner. I always call her Maxina. Uh, upon the death of the Spider Queen... A wondrous trinket dropped. Embrace of the Spider Queen. On our way to patchwork, everything seems fine. They're rolling off loot until my ears begin to ring at a very odd series of words. Casters begin rolling on the trinket, obviously. However, something is very wrong on the stream's Discord. Unknowing that one of their pugs was listening, they began the discussion. Okay. While I could describe the exact, uh, transcribe the exact words for you, I will instead explain the following logic. Because there you were, like a pack of fucking weasels, if you hear this, trying to figure out how to get out of giving this item to Soratoru. First, starting off with... I'm pretty sure heels don't even proc that trinket. Before someone cursing as they read it once again, realizing it does in fact proc from all spell damaging or healing. To the most obscene line I have ever heard to try and rationalize robbing someone. Healers don't need spell power. Don't give her that trinket. <laughs> I instantly realized what these people were doing. And as I swapped my recording from video to video and audio. And as I set this up, I sadly realized his stream was set to unarchived. Meaning there was no archive stream to download after, and no clips to be made. At this point, I was pissed off. I was so close to calling them out, but, well, then what? I already killed some bosses. I'm out of a, I'm out of a lockout, so no loot. They'll just replace me in an instant, and the new person won't believe what I say. And they'll be free to fuck over people in the future. So I say, fuck it, and keep my mouth shut. I just continue on as if nothing had happened. However, I sent a whisper to Soratoru straight away, explained my reasoning, and they agreed. And luckily, they could not find a way to not give them the trinket, and Soratoru won. No matter how many people in the guild told to roll on it, including hunters. <laughs> I want to point out, later they said Soratoru thought they were cool and were going to invite them to the guild in some way to defend themselves. And while the priest was rather passive, likely because he didn't know just how much they were trying to fuck them out of items, and when I approached them asking if that was true, they simply said, we don't care, they got maybe one item, and we'll never see these plebs again. Now, I may be overly zealous, I don't know the term correctly, but what is said next should cement my opinion on why these people needed to be called out. A random raid member. I wonder if Evil B would have won. Evil B didn't roll. Evil B says, I didn't even need it. And then a random mage, it's not the point. If you would have rolled on it and won, you could have taken it and then give it to someone else who lost the roll in the guild. This is definitely ball fat and ugly. This is absolutely ball fat and ugly. <clears throat> this is sotty written all over it. These series of lines could not have been any more perfect as proof 
these lot were doing their best to scam everybody who was helping them out of loot. And I was so mad I did not capture them in my recording as I had not gotten it set up in time. But from this point on, I was going to record everything I could to make sure that people knew what they were like. Now, to speed things up a little bit, a few minutes later, a cloak drops. No one needs it main spec, so I pipe up as a demo wall. I could say, hey, it's an overall upgrade for me. I got shit luck. Bad cloak. The MP5 is bad, but the rest of it is good. So I'm going to roll off spec. Is that okay? Now their druid, a boomkin, rolls off spec for it, losing the roll against me, which I can hear on Discord. Hey, paladin tank. Roll on it and trade it to the druid. So the pally tank rolls on the cloak. They win. And then I inspect the druid to see he's equipped it. The run goes smooth for the next 40-ish minutes before a BOE neck drops. And the weasels begin again. First talk about refusing to even give BOEs to pugs because the pugs would never have seen the BOEs if the guild hadn't put the raid together. They eventually gave up on that idea after some protests. And while that would be understandable if they said anything about it prior to the run, the only rules were main stack owns Ospec. Only one item reserved. However, I would also like to point out upon entering the raid on the way to the first boss of Nubra Khan, I had asked if they were doing a plus one system of main spec off spec. They were confused, so I explained. I don't know what that is. I explained that and they said no. It's important later. So let me explain super quickly what plus one is. Let's say you have two mages in a raid. One mage item drops. They both roll. Mage A wins. They get it. Mage A now has plus one. While mage B has zero. Another item drops. They roll. Mage A wins again. However, since mage B has gotten zero loot, they instead get the item. Now they're both plus one, which means future rolls are equal. This means no one person can get like eight items through lucky rolling and loot is evenly distributed. Why is this important then? Well, because one of their raiders chimes up. No, they already got a shit ton of gear. Now I had won two pieces of loot, but both of them were not rolled on by anyone else. They were free items. And the priest had only won one trinket, if I remember correctly. And I remind you, I asked them if they wanted to do an equal loot distribution system. I assume they chose not to because in the end, that would throw some wrenches into their plans. After realizing that would not work either, they dropped the subject discussing about how much they could sell it for on the auction house. We're now at Hygen, to which we begin rolling off a ring. With the Hark right out saying, everyone who can equip the ring, roll on it. Even if you don't need it, we need to start protecting guild loot from pugs. 15 minutes later, we are approaching Resuvius when they once again discuss rolling the BOE neck. Starting off discussing the possibility that if they didn't roll it off, we may not even notice they're keeping it. Although that was quickly shot down. We have to roll it. We didn't say BOEs were reserved and Blizzard might get us in trouble. To which many of them began chirping, I'll roll, I'll roll, with one even saying, why are we rolling, did one of them ask? To which everyone rolled, and I mean everyone in their guild. It was a caster neck, had hit and spell power, and yet every single one of their members who could use spell power, healers, paladin tanks, rolled. So of course I lost. Although close, except one. Zoratoru did not roll, saying it had hit. And while I was discussing with them that their healers also rolled, even with it having hit on it, they ended the roll quickly, so it was done and over. Whatever. They got their ring and cheers went out in Discord. As they literally cheered, we won over the pugs. A very obvious statement when compared to the normal I won. You would normally hear when someone got a nice item. I then asked the winner, funny enough it was Hark, as proof of them not planning to sell it. I mean, it's a BOE. When it is being rolled main spec, main spec, that is pretty often required to prove you are going to use it and not just sell it. Hark responds in text. Only the people who could actually use it rolled in it. Not like everyone rolled on it. Leaving me rather surprised they would admit that. Especially as in their Discord, they began discussing who they should trade the ring to. <laughs> With one of them noticing my message, 
and seemingly getting annoyed. In their Discord, one of them piped up, Why the fuck do these pugs care? They lost to a guild roll. To which Hark responded, I won the roll. I could DE if, it, DE if I fucking want to. And Resurious on the way to the next boss, they started talking about me specifically. Noticing I, as a demo support warlock in rather basic gear, was somehow keeping up with them, even commonly reaching top 3 in DPS in a booster spec. With them then need to say that I noticed that I had mostly grey logs in TBC, but they needed a warlock, so that's why I've been invited. And then began to make fun of me for my poor DPS in a the Burning Crusade classic. Now true, my DPS was bad. But DPS in the Burning Crusade wasn't good. But that was because I did very little raiding. Each raid about once, while a mostly solo content build of a Felguard focus. Because most of my footage gathering, of course, required open world content. It is when I played, and the only time I was raiding, I was there to film something. Usually in the worst possible gear. So needless to say, I was a bit annoyed by this. They were making a lot of assumptions about me. Especially... As what the fuck does it matter? Because I'm now here kicking their ass on DPS while still playing Demonology. But we're getting to the end. We approach Saffron. And with that, my first piece of contested loot drops. My third piece of loot from the run. Once again, the rolls begin. To which one of them, a death knight, chimes in. Over the tippity tapping of his keyboard. I am rolling... Oh, it's not even usable by me. Sorry, lads. I can't roll on it. It brought me to tears laughing. I nearly broke. I was laughing so hard about how blatant they were at trying to steal loot from us. And of course, it was then followed by Hark telling every other caster to roll for the loot, even though they all already had the item. Thankfully, I won the roll. Then they claim... I have been taking too much gear, including healing gear. Talking about the crappy cloak I'd won earlier, I guess. But then the time comes. Kel'Thuzad. The boss dies and loot begins to be rolled. Now the boss bugged and this meant instead of master loot, it was need over greed. And that with the soul blade was up for grabs. With everyone passing on everything as the guild instructed them to. Except for two people who couldn't risk it and rolled need on it. So I'm left with an option, friends. I have a 1 in 3 chance to snatch this item from them and become a ninja as a final fuck you. Or pass and let them roll it off. For sure they would do everything to get everyone to roll on it. Meaning about a 1 in 6 chance. Now this is for your audience to decide. Do you think I should have just rolled? Or was I to pass? Rolled normally and probably been scammed out of the item later. Well, it's nice to know that our live audience is full of degenerate thieves. <laughs> it was then I confronted them. I told them I have heard everything. I have literally recorded all of it. And that they were scum. If they wanted to behave like this, tell us ahead of time instead of being scummy and stupid. And by streaming their scam, they were so dumb. Their response first was, we could have been like Asmon Gold and taken all the loot. <laughs> the second response <laughs> was that you should have known it was going to be like this because it's a guild run. Use your common sense, especially week one and two, that we don't want to give pugs this loot. Although seemingly realizing how shitty that sounded, they quickly started to manipulate their story. The, be the next comment was, that's not how it actually happened. You're just salty you tried to take a healer item and lost on rolls. However, Evil B came to my defense, pointing out that I had in fact only rolled on one healer item, and I had stated why exactly I was. However, this is the story they would then continue to tell. They got angry, rightfully so, that they had been recorded as scammers, especially in the early weeks of Wrath of the Lich King. And I left as Hark said, Make your fucking video that no one's gonna watch, you no viewer Andy, because no one fucking cares about you. Who the fuck you gonna tell? Go show your proof to your mother. Wow. They were right, however. 
I was not exactly the leader of some mega guild on the server, nor was I going to put this video on YouTube channel as some expose. It was not what we did. Especially since the audio quality was recorded with multiple levels of compression from their mics. The Discord, to his recording software, to Twitch, to my computer, to my Twitch, to my recording software. Plus, I had not recorded most of the damning, the most obvious, and the part that literally explained it all. The Mayex and the Trinket. Luckily, I did not have to. Ark did it himself. A couple of days later, while trying my best to edit down the nearly three-hour recording and try to balance this man's horrible sound, I went to see if he was doing anything. I noticed the stream was up, and he was pugging. I told my friends, and they popped on, trolled his group a little bit while I worked. It was then that I noticed Ark had a YouTube channel. Going to said YouTube, I found the VOD. It turns out he streams to Twitch and YouTube simultaneously. And with that, I found a perfect VOD of his own collection posted on his YouTube. And in this, I got the perfect moment. I now have an audio recording of the infamous lines if you wish to play them. I have, of course, removed the names if you wish. <sighs> is that... Is it... Safe Bex in terms of this person being outed? We Drama Time has one golden rule. Maintain anonymity. And an audio recording feels like a step too far. It's safe. Okay, Bex has given us the all clear. Bex has checked it. <clears throat> audio only. Uh, what's the best way of getting this audio to you guys? All right, give me a hot second here. I'm going to do this. I need to hide that before I do this. That's... Okay, this should work. Uh, uh, that is the exact amount of streams remaining uh, with everything that's happening, and I'm not doing other things before FF16 launches. Uh, we have exactly 11.2 uh, stream days of time to complete our projects. That's what that calculation is. We had to math it out. Give me that race spear. <laughs> Wait, is that loud enough for you guys? It's pretty quiet, my end. Did you hear that? Could be louder. Hold on. Let me just turn it up a little bit. Give me that race spear. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Go on. I wouldn't even think that. It doesn't have to point that. You would have taken it and then given it to someone in the guild that does need it. Ah, so that's the important part. You should have taken. You should have taken that and then give it to someone else in the guild. You lost the roll. You would have taken it and then given it to someone in the guild that does need it. Now, I would like to say I'm Mr. Innocent here. And uh, said I've not been involved uh, in a... I... I have not actually done this myself. I want to be absolutely clear. But I would be an absolute liar to say I have not seen my guild do this. <laughs> I would. Uh, one of one of the guilds I've been in over the years, I would be an absolute fucking liar to say I have not seen one of my guilds do this exact process. <clears throat> I don't agree with it. I didn't do it. Fool of a took in it. <laughs> with this, I have the perfect direct evidence. This was them talking a first person showing this to being dumb. But it's not the end of the story, for I got another plan. It was then I remembered this server had a Discord, one that I was free to report them to. And with that, I contacted the mods, a report was filed, and soon the entire Discord was clowning on them. To the point they even joined in the discussion in an attempt to defend their actions. But no one really took the bait. They left the Discord, and I have yet to see them since. 
I sure hope it's stuck, but I have a feeling there is only so far something like a simple Discord callout will reach. You would be fucking surprised. You would be surprised how quickly word of mouth spreads. I did contact a GM about it, with all the evidence, but was told while this was damning, they're not allowed to step in on something like that. Okay. That is the end. He deleted the YouTube VOD after the comments filled with people calling him out. And at first he deleted some comments, responded to others trying to defend it, denying he deleted others and said it was standard practice before deleting the whole video. He even subscribed to me. <laughs> Luckily, me and the mods have backed it all up. I apologize once again for writing, uh, my writing not being great, but uh, went, uh, it's a combination of my nationality and uh, getting the details of my notes together. So tell me, should I have risked that one in three to win that soul blade? And while I doubt I wa uh, was, I was wrong in all of this, is it okay what they did? And is it just me or was evil be a decent sounding guy in a shit guild? Uh, no, they shouldn't have done that. You probably could have rolled on it. It would have been fine. Evil B sounds fine. He's, Evil B sounds like someone who's watching his friends that he generally really likes doing something really shitty and is like annoyed by it, but not enough to leave his friends. You know what I mean? Not enough to leave his friends. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. I've been there. I've not shit on anybody. I'm usually passing stuff. Um, in fact, the only time I had to interject on that is I think we were doing a viewer stream in Legion. And a few of my guildies launched. We were doing like something. We were doing a... Oh, we were doing Gul'dan. I remember it. We were doing a viewer Gul'dan. And a few of my guildies joined. And I noticed on their alts, like... But I noticed that they were all rolling on items. And I knew some of them didn't need it. And I had to bitch at them in guild chat. You guys couldn't see it because my face was covering the chat box. But I was like, do not fucking do that to my viewers, man. That's, that's not cool. That's not how we play it. But that will bring us to the end of drama time for this week. Court is closed, my friends. Court is closed. Uh, I've got a very busy weekend in front of me. Monday, we will hash out the details of what this goddamn plan is with uh, before FF16 launches because it includes Crisis Core, FF7 Remake, Wing 6, and so on and so forth. There's a lot to do. So we've got some mega streams coming up. Let's put it that way. Uh, I am going to go and uh, go to the gym, actually, and uh, get some blood flowing in my veins. Uh, so for everyone else, be good, and I'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.